If you're anything like me and love a walk on the wild side, UK riverbanks offer some of the best areas to take in nature. Whilst walking along a riverbank can be a massive stress reliever and a whole lot of fun, you do have to be careful about what could be lurking around you or beneath you. Now I'm not talking about any wild beasts here, although there may be a few to watch out for. I'm talking about some seriously deadly and somewhat sneaky foliage. Yep, I bet you didn't think plants could be a menace now, did you? Well, without scaring you away from your riverside woodland walks, I'm here to share some tips on plants to look out for that can be harmful. I'm sure that many of you will know that the UK has some pretty toxic plants that if ingested could cause some major issues. But there are also some sneaky little triffids that may look pretty, but by simply touching them, they can cause you or your pets to become very poorly indeed. I'm off to meet with Darren Tansley from Essex Wildlife Trust to show me some of the UK's woodland plants and those ones to watch out for alongside a river. Well, Darren, this is a brilliant spot for plant spotting. Now, I have already been stung a few times on the ankle by the, <laughs> the nettles that we have here. Nettle, yeah. It's everywhere because it's a nutrient tracker. Yeah. So everywhere you get the flooding and you get silt up on the bank, that creates the perfect habitat <laughs> for nettle. It just loves it. Well, they're doing pretty well. Yeah. But what else should we be looking out for? Um, you know, toxic plants, plants that we could touch or, dare I say, if we ingested would cause a problem. Yeah, the, the, the most deadly one for us really is, is the giant hogweed. Okay. Um, that is similar to this. This is normal hogweed. Oh, okay. They're not related. They're so not the same plant. <laughs> this is fine. This is just a, a, a native plant. But it grows to about four to five meters tall. So it'd be way above your height yeah. in one season. And the problem with that is that the sap causes blistering of the skin. Yeah. And that can actually affect you for a lifetime. Every time you go out in the sun, your skin bubbles up and blisters. So that's a really nasty one. Yeah. I'm glad it's not along here. Uh, and to be honest, uh, it would be removed as soon as it was seen if it was here. Yeah. Um, so, you know, there, there are a lot of plants here that um, you don't want to eat. Yes. <laughs> not necessarily going to kill you. Yeah. Um, uh, you know, we, we have, uh, you know, a number of different species just along here, um, including the flag iris. They're all fine. Yeah. Um, but yeah, look out for those nasty ones. Yeah. I mean, we haven't got hogweed, a giant hogweed, as you said, and you, you mentioned that it would be removed. Who would be in charge of removing a plant like that? Yeah, it depends on where you find it. Okay. It's usually uh, the, the landowner that would be responsible for re removing it, but you might call in somebody specialist to do that for you. You don't yeah. want to be handling it yeah. at all. So it is something that you really need to get professional advice on before you do anything about it. Yeah. You want to get it out before it flowers. Oh, okay. Once it flowers and then seeds, then those seeds will be hundreds and hundreds of those seeds will spread. Right. And on a river, they'll float down to the next person. Well, foraging, Darren, has become really popular in recent years. You know, wild garlic, everyone always raves about that. But you do have to be careful, don't you, when you're picking things? Well, yes. I mean, you need to know what the plant is that you're picking. You've got to be very certain that you're getting the right thing. Now, wild garlic's great. It grows down by woodland streams, damp yeah. areas, lots of shade, and it will, you know, just cover a large area. And you can tell instantly when you crush the leaf that it smells of garlic. So you should be fairly certain. But of course, you could have similar plants growing near it like lily of the valley and if you accidentally pick one of those yeah. uh, with your garlic then you kind of feel pretty ill uh, it may not yeah. kill you but you won't have a nice time of it for a while yeah. so yes it's always just be certain about that plant that you're picking that you feel confident that you know exactly what it is yeah and we've also got things like water hemlock and uh, that, that grows very close to other things what, what's the implications of picking something like that um yeah pretty nasty to, to eat that, that could be deadly and touching um not so much touching but definitely you know do not do not eat it and yeah. i think with anything if you start to handle plants out in the wild you, you don't eat anything until you've washed your hands you know yeah. this is basic safety precaution yeah and um yeah it's it's all about knowing what you're picking um go out with somebody that that does this stuff and really knows what they're looking for so yeah. you can see it for real don't just rely on a, an illustration in a book 
Yeah, I mean, there's many plants here that look so similar. Cow parsley looks really like hemlock and wild carrot, wild, wild parsnip. You do have to be extra careful, don't you? Yeah, yeah. And these are the sorts of things that can easily get muddled on. Yeah. Um, so yeah, your own safety is the most important thing. If you don't know, don't pick. Yeah. And there's also some really pretty flowers like bluebell that we know that they do so well in woodland um, and foxglove. You wouldn't potentially want to eat one of those, but they're no. also poisonous, are they not? Yeah, foxglove can be very nasty. I mean, it, it has, has been used in the past for poisons, making poisons. I mean, this is uh, deliberate stuff, in the not accidental. <laughs> um, yeah, it would be a favourite of the medieval uh, times, I think. Um, but again, you know, these are the sort of plants you should not, you should not be eating anything like that. Yeah. They just, just leave well alone. They, they're, they're great in the wild. And in general, we don't uh, encourage picking wild flowers of, of any sort. You know, let, let them do their thing, seed thing. Because if you pick flower, it will never seed. Yeah. Um, the seed comes after us. It's great to know that the waterways companies and the local authorities are always keeping an eye out for troublesome plants such as giant hogweed, deadly nightshade and water hemlock. So you're unlikely to come across any of these, but it's important to have the knowledge in your back pocket so if you do see them, you can be extra careful when taking your dog out for a walk or just enjoying your normal woodland walk. We don't want to scare anyone away from woodland. It's one of the greatest joys of nature. What would your message be for anyone watching today? I think enjoy the countryside. Go out there and, and, and look at what's out there. Yeah. If you don't know something, don't touch it. Yeah. it just, it's just really important that you're safe when you're out and about. There's nothing really to worry about if you're just looking at the yeah. wonderful plants that are around you. And that really is the key to why we make these videos. We want you to enjoy your woodland walk, enjoy nature and also pass on that knowledge. But remember, the golden rule of nature, if you don't know what it is, then don't touch it. And certainly don't eat it. Until next time, thanks for watching.